coming out. Behind the plate, Jim Evans at first base, John Rice. At second, Ruskett. And at third, George Maloney. I believe Scooter gave you the uh, Red Sox lineup. I'll go over again for you. Rick Miller leading off playing left. Reggie Smith in center field batting second. Yaz Jastrzemski at first base batting third. Orlando Cepeda batting fourth. He's a designated hitter. The third baseman, Rico Petroselli, batting fifth, followed by the catcher, Carlton Fisk, batting seventh and playing right field, Dwight Evans. The shortstop, Louis Aparicio, batting eighth. And the former Yankee, Mario Guerrero, playing second base and batting ninth. Pitching for the Red Sox. Fella just over another arm operation, right-hander Ray Cope. Cope has won one loss three so far this year. It's his fifth start. He has no complete games, and his ERA, 3.79. For the Yankees, Bernie Allen will lead off and play second base in his first game. Bernie batting 267, no home runs, four runs batted in. The right fielder, John Callison, will bat second. Callison at 156 with no home runs, six runs batted in. Batting third and playing left, the switch hitting Roy White. White at 248 with nine home runs and 27 ribbies. Bobby Mercer, the center fielder, will bat fourth. Mercer at 304, 14 home runs and 55 runs batted in. Batting fifth and playing first base, Ron Bloomberg. Boomer batting just four points under 400. He's at 396. Five home runs and 34 runs batted in. And, of course, Bloomberg's three-run home run off Marty Patton in the first inning. Won that ball game yesterday for the Yankees by a score of 3-1. to one. Batting sixth and playing third base for the Yankees, Greg Nettles. Nettles at 243 with 13 home runs and 45 runs batted in. Batting seventh for the Yankees, a designated hitter. Jim Ray Hart. Yankees are now taking the field. Jim Ray batting at 244 with seven home runs and 31 runs batted in. Batting eighth and catching, Thurm Munson. Munson at 285 with 11 home runs and 40 runs batted in. The shortstop, Gene Michael, will bat ninth. Stick batting at 244, three home runs and 33 runs batted in. Pitching for the Yankees, out on the mound now, Mel Stottlemyer. Stottlemyre making his 20th start. He's won 10 ball games, lost seven. He's pitched eight complete ball games. His ERA 3.51. And so far this year against the Boston Red Sox, Stottlemyre has won one and he has lost one. The Yankees in first place in the East by four games over Baltimore. The Detroit Tigers, who've really been on a winning tear lately, four and a half games out there in third place, followed by the Milwaukee Brewers. The Brewers now one game over 500. They've won 39 and lost 38. They're five and a half games out. The Red Sox playing an even 500 baseball. They've won 37 and lost 37. Six games out. And the Cleveland Indians 18 and a half games out. The Yankees 12 games over 500. They've won 46 games and lost 34. Baltimore's won 38 and they've lost 34. In the West, Oakland has a one-game lead over Minnesota, two-and-a-half over Chicago. In the National League East, Chicago Cubs have a five-and-a-half game lead over the St. Louis Cardinals. And in the West, the Los Angeles Dodgers have a four-and-a-half game lead over the San Francisco Giants. Well, the Yankees throwing the ball around infield, and we're just about ready to get underway in this first game of a doubleheader. The Yankees and the Red Sox and Rick Miller. The left fielder stepping in for the Red Sox. Miller batting at 291. He's a left-handed hitter. He has one home run and ten runs batted in. Taking the place of Tommy Harper. Miller played center field in the first game of the series. Did an excellent job defensively in that ball game. The Red Sox won 1-0 on Dwight Evans. Home run into the right field seats off Fritz Peterson. Only one of two hits given up by Peterson in that first game. Of course, the Yankees won uh, yesterday by a score 3-1. to one. Here's the first pitch down to Miller. Breaking ball hit on in the air to right center. Coming in is Callis. He's under it, and he's got it. One down. Miller, first ball hitting. Hit a little lazy fly ball out in the right center field, and John Callis got it. Here's Reggie Smith, the center fielder. Smith missed the opening game of the series with a sore shoulder. Played in yesterday's ball game. He's a switch hitter, batting left-handed against Stottlemyre. Takes inside a ball. Smith batting at 281. Eight home runs, 26 runs batted in. The next 
next pitch. Swung on, hit on the ground a second. Charged by Bernie Allen. He's got it. Throws to Bloomberg. Two down. Left-handed hitter batting at 261, 10 home runs and 42 runs batted in. He's one for seven in the series. That's a double. Takes down low ball. They got that double in yesterday's ball game. The Yankees so far have held uh, Yastrzemski and Carlton Fisk in uh, check. The 1-0 pitch, down low ball, 2, 2-0. Two oh. Fisk is 0 for 8. Yaz, 1 for 7. 2-0 pitch now to Carl Yastrzemski. Breaking ball, hit on the ground at second base. Allen waits, he's got the big hop. Throws to Bloomberg, and Yastrzemski's out. Over the Red Sox in the first inning. Three up and three down. We go into the bottom of the first. The Red Sox nothing. Yankees coming up. Avco Financial Services of New York has good news for anyone who's been noticing how far a dollar doesn't go these days. Now you can get nearly twice as much money at any of the 29 Avco offices in New York City or upstate. That's right. Instead of $1,400, now you can get up to $2,500. So anytime you see or hear anything advertised, remember who can help you buy it. And now Avco can help you with nearly twice as much money. Avco Financial Services of New York. When you believe in the world, the world is around. Avco Financial Services believes in people. Over one million people every year with over one million loans for everything from appliances to x-rays. So when you come into Avco, you come into money. Because if you deserve the credit, at Avco you get it. Spread the word. Avco Financial Services. When you believe in people, when you get around. Here's a little reminder for you. Tomorrow's game will start at 2 o'clock, not 6 p.m. as originally scheduled. So tomorrow, game time two here at the stadium. It'll be Bill Lee for the Red Sox and Pat Dobson for the Yankees. Also, another reminder, don't forget, there'll be another game after this one here at the stadium today. Doc Bennett will be pitching for the Yankees that second ball game. And Roger Moretta, left-hander, scheduled for the Red Sox. Right now, Ray Cope has just finished his warm-up throws, and he's about ready to deal with Bernie Allen. Allen batting at 267. No home runs and four runs batted in. Cope so far this year has won one, and he's lost three. Right-hander's first pitch is a breaking ball inside. When Cope is on, he's got the good fastball. It moves up and away from left-handers. And an excellent change curve and a good change-up. Since he had his arm operated on, you can never tell what he's come back with. There's a fastball outside, 2-0. Oh. He's making his first appearance against the Yankees this season. He sent down to Pawtucket on June 8th to work his arm troubles out. Allen takes a strike. It's 2-1. Ray Cope was not on the Red Sox roster this spring, but was invited to the big league camp after his arm operation. Evidently, he has come all the way back. Here's the 2 1 pitch to Allen, though. Curveball chopped out toward the mound. Cope drops it. And Bernie Allen is safe. That was a little chopper out to the mound, just to the right of Cope. He tried to get it barehanded, and he couldn't handle it. And Ray Cope uh, is. Let's see. He's given a hit. Bernie Allen is given a hit. Oh, Bernie Allen on first with an infield hit. And here's John Callison, the right fielder. Hope tried to handle that ball barehanded, but couldn't find the handle. Callison batting at 156. No home runs and six runs batted in. The pitch to him is on the outside corner to call strike. Now Callison wants to look at the baseball. Callison and Cope played together many years down with the Philadelphia Phillies. Cope originally signed by the Phillies. 
I gave him a hundred thousand dollars or more to sign a contract. Now the set by the right-hander. Throw the first. Allen is back. Yastrzemski holding Bernie there. No score here in the bottom of the first. Bernie Allen leading from first. The 0-1 pitch to Callis. Down low. One and one. Petroselli, the third baseman. After we show the shortstop. Guerrero, Mario Guerrero, the second baseman. And Carl Yastrzemski holding Bernie Allen at first. As Pope sets and delivers. Curve ball hit deep to the right field, but it's foul in the upper deck. One and two. The Red Sox have Rick Miller in left. Reggie Smith playing a callison of pool in center. And Dwight Evans, the right fielder, straight away. Carlton Fisk catching. And Ray Cope looking for a sign on the mound. He's got it. Sets it to belt. The one-two pitch. Inside, two and two. Two ball, two strike count on Callison. Bernie Allen at first base with nobody out here in the first. I think he's trying to get on the board first. Both sets. And the pitch. Curve ball is too high. Full count. Uh, Cope is another one of those pitchers with the high kick. And a lot of teams like to steal on that kind of pitcher. Uh, he'll usually throw the first base quite a bit. He knows guys like to run on him. Still looking for the sign. Still looking. Allen with a short lead. Callison backs out. Pope took too long. Time's called. Roy White on deck for the Yankees. Full count on Callis. Allen leads from first. The payoff pitch. Bernie's going. Driven a deep right center. Going way back is Evans and Reggie Smith. Evans, the right fielder, calls, and he's got it. One down. Callison got a 3-2 breaking ball and drove it into right center field. Bernie Allen was moving uh, with the pitch. And as Evans hauled it in, Allen went back to first. One down, Allen at first, here's Roy White, the left fielder. White at 248, nine home runs and 27 runs batted in. Here's the first pitch to him. Fastball line, deep to right field. That was going back, way back up against the wall, and one hands it. And gets the ball in quickly to second base, and Allen goes back to first once again. Two down. White down on top of that ball and drove Dwight Evans all the way back to the base of the wall, 344 feet. Here's Mercer. Mercer gets a big hand, and he should, batting a 304. 14 home runs and 55 runs batted in. Yankees getting some good cuts here at Ray Cope. Ray does not have the velocity on the fastball that he had last year. The pitch to Mercer. Curveball line. Foul into the seats on the right field side. Bounces back out into the playing area. No balls and a strike. No score. Bottom of the first. Pope has given up three home runs in 19 innings. The 0-1 pitch to Mercer. Outside, one and one. He's given up eight earned runs in 19 innings. An ERA of 3.79. He struck out 15, and he's also walked 15. Now the right-hander sets. The 1-1 pitch to Mercer. Curve ball driven deep to right field. Back in the corner is Evans. He's got the room, and he's got it in the corner, just inside the foul line on the fair side for out number three. Well, the Yankees with Callis and White and Mercer all flying deep to the right field. They go down, no runs on one hit, no errors, the man left on base. After one, Yankees nothing, the Red Sox nothing. Did you know there's a team of 53 Dotson dealers to serve you in the metropolitan area? 
parts, service, and the line of Datsuns that can satisfy the need of any driver. The 1200 sedan is sports coupe, so economical that you can start your own gas war. You get up to 30 miles a gallon. The 510 sedan, the national SCCA and Trans Am champ. An economy car with a sophisticated combination of safety front disc brakes, overhead cam engine, and independent rear suspension. The 610 series, truly luxury cars with an economy price. Choose from a two-door hardtop, four-door sedan, or five-door wagon. All Datsun Originals. The pickup truck, it's called the Little Hustler. It's a half-ton pickup, just like the ones that seem bigger. The difference is that the Datsun is smaller where it counts. It's easier to handle on the road or off. And most important, it's less expensive to operate and maintain. The 240Z, Datsun's top of the line, a perfect combination of performance and luxury. Now, your Metropolitan, New York, New Jersey, and Fairfield County Datsun dealer. He's the guy who brings it all together. So back this winning team, you'll be a winner, too. Well, Orlando Cepeda will lead off for the Red Sox as we go into the top half of the second inning. There's no score here at Yankee Stadium. Sox and the Yankees have split the first two games of this series. Red Sox winning 1-0 uh, in the opener, and the Yankees winning 3-1 uh, yesterday on Ron Bloomberg's three-run home run in the first inning. Cepeda batting at 290, 12 home runs, 43 runs batted in. He's a big right-handed hitter. Stands deep in the box. Takes a strike from Stottlemyre. They call Orlando Peruchin, his father, Perucho, a great baseball player in Puerto Rico in the years past. Falls in deep to left center field. White's after it. Still going. Still digging. And he's got it. Cepeda drove Roy White deep into left center field to get his long drive. And it's one down here in the second. Here's Rico Petrosoli, the third baseman. Right-handed hitter. He's batting just under 250 with 10 home runs and 31 runs batted in. Stottlemyre's first pitch. Breaking balls a strike. Carlton Fisk on deck. They play Petroselli to pool here in the stadium. Stottlemyre over the head. The 0-1 pitch. Down the dirt. Skips past Munson all the way back to the screen. 1-1. One and one. Pretty good crowd on hand at the stadium for this afternoon's doubleheader. Yankees won over 600,000 yesterday. The 1-1 pitch. Fastball chopped to third. Nettles has it behind the bag. Long throw to first. And he's out. Two down. Here's Carlton Fisk, the catcher. He's batting a 286. 16 home runs and 48 runs batted in. Fisk has been held hitless in the series. He's 0 for 8. He's bound to break out sometime. Takes a lot of time, as Munson does. A little dirt on the hands. Now he goes to the pine tar on the bat, goes to the top of the bat, and finally settles comfortably into the batter's box. Stottlemyre's first pitch aside on curveball. It gets the outside corner to call strike. Two down, nobody on. Top of the second, no score. The old one pitch to Fisk. Change up, top foul over near the Red Sox dugout. And it's no balls and two strikes. Yankees with a four-game lead in the American League East. Baltimore beat Milwaukee 9-7 in the first game. Last night, outside, 1-2, and two, Stottlemyre wasted one. In the second game uh, last night, uh, Milwaukee was leading Baltimore 4-1. to one. The game was suspended after seven innings, and it'll be uh, finished today. Here's the 1-2 pitch down to Fisk. Curveball line, base hit down the left field line. White's over quickly. Fisk around first, he's going to try it. No, he changed his mind as White throws a strike into Michael. 
So Carlton Fisk breaks an 0 for 8 slump by singling sharply down the left field line. A fine play by Roy White getting to the ball quickly and getting it into second base held Fisk to a single. So that is the first base hit off Stottlemyre. And here's Dwight Evans, the right fielder. Evans at 254 with four home runs and 12 runs batted in. That fourth home run, a solo shot off Peterson in the opener. Beat the Yankees 1-0. The first pitch to Evans, outside a ball. And Evans went to the right field side for that. He hit into the right field section. One game going now. San Francisco 5, Cincinnati 2 after 7. That's the National League. It's set by Stottlemyre. The 1-0 pitch to Evans. Check swing down low, 2-0. Louis Aparicio on deck. No score here in the top of the second. Two men out. Carlton Fisk, not known for his speed at first base. Bloomberg holds him. Eddie Popowski coaching the third for the Red Sox. Don Lenhart coaches first. Fisk leaves. He's checked. 2-0 pitch to Evans. There's a strike. Slider on the corner. 2-1. and one. Evans seems to be looking for the fastball from Stottlemyre. He's gotten three breaking pitches. Now they set it to belt. 2-1 pitch. There goes Fisk. The ball's in and here to right field. Callison with the range. He's under it now. Backs up a step. And he's got it for out number three. The Red Sox hitting and running, but Evans fly to Callison Wright for the third out. For the Red Sox in the second, no runs on one hit. And they leave one base runner. We're going to the bottom of the second. Yankees nothing, and the Red Sox nothing. There's something about a baseball game that makes a couple of frosty cold beers really taste great. Maybe that's why so many baseball fans are Schaefer fans, too, because only Schaefer delivers that first beer flavor, first beer pleasure, first frosty glass to last. That's what puts Schaefer a cut above the others. The one beer to have when you're having more than one, and brother, you've got it coming. Big happy birthday to Hal Lanier, Yankee utility infielder. Lanier, 31 years old today. Hey, and this is the United States birthday today, too. 197 years old today. Here's the boomer, Ron Bloomberg, in for the Yankees, bottom of the second. Bloomberg batting at 396, five home runs, 34 runs batted in. Pope's first pitch is outside a ball. Bloomberg still leads the major leagues in batting at 396. 1 0 pitch. Curve ball inside, ball 2, 2 0. Hey, Ronnie got a hanging curve up from Marty Patton in yesterday's ball game and drove it into the upper deck. Patton settled down, retired 14 in a row at one stretch. And it ended up a close ball game. Yankees won it 3 to 1. 2 0 pitch. Swung on and missed the high slider. It's 2 and 1. Oh, Bloomberg and Felipe Lou together now, driven in 51 runs. Here's a 2 1 pitch to the Boomer. Curveball hit on a ground foul outside of first. And it's 2 and 2. No score here in the second. Each team with a base hit. Neither team yet has made an error. Bernie Allen got the Yankees hit, leading off to play a ball game. He got an infield hit off Pope's hand. Carlton Fisk broke an 0-8 slump by singling the top of this inning. 
Fastball hit foul outside of first, and this is the New York Yankee Baseball Network. Let's pause for station identification. Hi, I'm John Watson, extending you a standing invitation to join me weekdays from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., Saturday nights from 9 p.m. to 2 a.m. for music, news, and OTB reports in John's World on WQBK, AM, and FM, Rensselaer. The 2-2 two, two pitch to Bloomberg is down low, ball three, and it's a full count. Really playing Bloomberg to pull. Evans in right. Reggie Smith over in right center. And Rick Miller now moves a step over toward left center. Here's the payoff pitch to Boomer. Curveball chopped out in front of the plate. Pope is up with it. Throws the first. Bloomberg is out. Now Pope got away with a high breaking ball. Bloomberg got on top of it and just chopped it out toward the mound on the first base side. And he's thrown out one to three. One down here in the second. Here's Greg Nettles. Nettles at 243 with 13 home runs and 45 runs batted in. Pope looking in, has the sign from Fitch, kicks and deals the first pitch. Fastball is swung on and missed. Well, if we said in that first inning, Pope looked uh, as though he did not have much velocity. He swung that ball a little harder this inning. It only took him an inning to get loose. And the 0-1 pitch to Nettles. Inside, 1-1. One and one. A lot of guys have arm operations, and it takes them a while to come back. Here's the 1-1 pitch to Nettles. Breaking ball in the dirt, 2-1. And, and that's Cope's at least second arm operation that I can remember. He had one in the National League. Looked like uh, his career was shot, but he came back with the Red Sox. Always been bothered by chips. Also by shoulder trouble. 2-1 pitch now to Nettles. Swung on, driven deep to right center. Reggie Smith way back out there. Back near the track, still going, backing up, and one-hands it. Just in front of the 407-foot side and deep right center field. That's the big can of corn here at the stadium. Two outs. Hey, the Yankee left-handed hitters have really hit the ball hard off Pope in these first two innings. As Jim Ray Hart steps in, he's batting 244. Seven home runs and 31 runs batted in. Two outs, nobody on here in the bottom of the second. No score. First pitch, a slider swung on and missed. Callison. Drove Evans in the right center a good ways for his drive. Roy White drove Evans all the way back to the base of the wall for his drive in the first inning. And Bobby Mercer drove him into the corner down the right field line for his drive. Slider outside on hard is one and one. And Greg Nettles just hit one that had to go at least 395, 97 feet, maybe 400 feet. Reggie Smith ran that one down. 1-1 one, one pitch to Hart. Fastball popped up on the left side of the infield. That free show, the shortstop, with the glasses down. He's under it. He's got it. Crowd number three. Over the Yankees in the second. Three up, three down. After two, Yankees nothing. Red Sox nothing. <laughs> At the Getty Oil Company, we sell premium gasoline for a few cents less per gallon than most other major premiums. Now, there are three ways of looking at what that difference in price can mean to you. One, the money you save. If you drive around 12,000 miles a year and use Getty Premium instead of another major premium, you'll save around $30. Two, the extra gas you get. The $30 you save by using Getty Premium is enough money to buy another 75 gallons of Getty Premium. And three, the extra miles you get. That 75 extra gallons of Getty Premium is enough gas to take you about 1,000 miles. A $30 savings, 75 more gallons, or 1,000 more miles. That's the difference between Getty Premium and most other major premiums. Well, that suspended ball game uh, down in Baltimore is over now, and the Baltimore Orioles came back and won it 6-4. to four. 
Baltimore had won the first game uh, yesterday by a score of 9-1. to one. The second game, Milwaukee was leading 4-1 after 7. Well, Baltimore tied it with three runs in the 8th. And they went 10 innings. Baltimore picked up two runs in the 10th, and they won it 6-4. to four, So they have gained a half game on the Yankees. Here's Aparicio. Breaking ball is a strike. So Baltimore right now, by sweeping the, yesterday's doubleheader, now three and a half games behind the Yankees. They won 39 and lost 34. The old one pitch to Aparicio. All strike two. No score. Top of the third. It'll be Aparicio. Mario Guerrero and Rick Miller for the Red Sox. Aparicio, Louis batting at 266. Sidearm curveball is lined down the left field line. It's a base hit. Aparicio around first as White gets the ball in the corner and Louis has doubled. Aparicio got an 0-2 breaking ball and lined it down the left field side. Went all the way into the corner. And Louis stopped at second with a double. And here's Mario Guerrero, the second baseman. And Roy White has some help out there in left field. A bad play on the left field line. But have to get a glove, he's going to stay there. They're trying to coax him back off the field. Guerrero waiting to hit. He's batting at 261. No home runs and five runs batted in. Well, they got the spare left fielder out of there. Maybe he thinks White needs up out there. <laughs> He'll cover the line and let Roy cover left center. <laughs> Guerrero, right-handed batter. Someone doesn't strike out much. I think he's only struck out two times. Pitch to it, down low in the dirt, it's a ball. Guerrero's been up 92 times, and he has struck out only three times. Well, I think he hasn't struck out in his last 62 appearances. Oh, he hasn't struck out in his last 69 appearances, so he gets a bat on the ball. Aparicio leading from second with no outs here in the third. No score. The set by Stottlemyre. The 1-0 pitch. Swung on. Chopped foul behind the plate. Munson grabs it. It's 1-1. One one. After 8, San Francisco 6, Cincinnati 2. Boy, Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. Last year's winners over there in the National League having a lot of trouble. Pittsburgh 8 and a half games out. Cincinnati 7 out. There are different leagues in the National League. Fastball fouled off by Guerrero. One ball, two strikes. Mario trying to go to right field, advance the runner. The Pittsburgh is four games under 500. They're in fifth place in the National League East, eight and a half games behind Chicago. Cincinnati, six games over 500, seven games behind the Dodgers in the West. Here's the one-two pitch to Guerrero. Swung on and missed, and that's the first time that young fella struck out in 70 appearances. And a big strikeout for Stottlemyre. One down. Aparicio still at second. And here's Rick Miller, the left fielder. He's a left-handed batter. Fly to right field his first time up, so he's 0 for 1. He's batting at 289 with the home run, 10 runs batted in. Aparicio leading from second. Stottlemyre checks him. Checks him again. The first pitch to Miller is top the first base. Bloomberg in, has it near the bag, and he'll step on the bag for out number two. And on the play, Aparicio goes to third. Here's Reggie Smith, center fielder. Smith went a long way uh, last inning to grab Nettles drive in right center. 
And the first time up, he bounced to Bernie Allen at second, so he's 0 for 1. Switch hitter batting a 279. He's hit the Yankees hard to over the year. He's batting 348 overall against the Yankees. Here's Donald Myers' first pitch. Down low, it's a ball. Louis Aparicio at third with two down here in the top half of the third inning. Neither team has scored. Nettles playing in close at third. Stottle Myers next pitch to Smith. A strike, a fastball on the outside corner. One and one. Jim Evans umpiring behind the plate. John Rice at first. Russ Getz at second. And a New Yorker. George Maloney at third. One one pitch coming down to Reggie Smith. Outside it's two and one. Carl Yastrzemski's on deck. Otto now takes the hat off. Wipes the brow. And he wipes the hands off. Now he's ready. Kicks and deals a 2-1 pitch. Curveball hit right back to Mel. Threw him, but Michael has it behind the bag at second. Throws the first, and they've got Reggie Smith for out number three. I don't know if Stottlemyer touched that ball or not. It went through him. Michael picked it up and threw Smith out, so we'll score it 6-3. And for the Red Sox in the third, no runs on one hit. No Yankee errors and a man left on base. We go into the bottom of the third. Yankees nothing, Red Sox nothing. Live modern this summer. Live cool this summer with Fetters, the room air conditioner of excellence. The linkage of two words, Fetters and excellence, began more than 75 years ago. The company's founder established his business on the principle that if you build a product exceptionally well, your customers will be exceptionally loyal. When you buy a Fetters product, you know that it's been engineered with an extra measure of care. Manufactured with an extra measure of concern. Fabricated of materials that offer an extra assurance of dependability. Though the cost of living is going up, Fetters actually keeps the cost of room air conditioners down with its Super Saver and Silver Anniversary specials. There's a Fetters room air conditioner model available to meet your particular cooling requirements. See them, then live modern, live cool with Fetters. At Fernapco Furniture and Appliance in Albany, at Byright Appliances, Schenectady, and at Stylecraft Appliance in Albany. Oh, Fair Munson will lead off against Ray Cope here in the bottom of the third. No score yet. Munson batting at 285, 11 home runs, and 40 runs batted in. He's a right-handed hitter. They play him straight away. Cope's first pitch coming down. And it's a slider on the corner. It's a strike. Time's call now. Third baseman Rico Petroselli wants some sunglasses. Red Sox bat boy carries him out to him. Cope looking in. Still looking. Now he's ready. The 0-1 pitch to Munson. On the corner again. Strike call number two. Two strikes on Munson. Cope with the excellent slider. He hasn't thrown his change yet. He's gone with the curveball, the slider, and the fastball. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Munson. Fastball drives him back. It's 1-2. and two. No score here in the third. Yankees no runs on one hit. Red Sox no runs on two. The one-two pitch to Munson. Curveball. Loop to left field. And quickly as Miller, he can't get to it. The ball falls in front of him. He gets it on a first stop. And Sir Munson has just picked up the Yankees. A second base hit in the ball game. Leading off here in the third. He's there at first. And here's Dick Michael, the shortstop. Gene is switching. It'll bat left-handed against Cole. Michael batting at 244. Three home runs, 33 runs batted in. Bernie Allen moves into the on-deck circle. Bernie has the other Yankee hit. As Cope sets and pitches. Swung on, hit on the ground a second. Guerrero has it to second, and they get the force there as Aparicio gets out of the way of a sliding Munson. So Michael, first ball hitting... 
forces a third Munson at second base, four to six for the first stop. Stick on at first. And here's Bernie Allen, the second baseman. Bernie got an infield hit his first time up, and he gained, uh, let's see, he gained 23 points. He's batting 290 now. Bernie was batting 267 coming in. Of course, he hasn't been up that much. He's only been up 31 times. Here's the first pitch to Bernie. Breaking ball, line foul outside of first. Kicks back onto the playing area. One strike count. The Yankees as a team batted 268. They've hit 67 home runs. The Red Sox as a team batting at 265. They've hit 70 home runs. Not much difference here. Set by Colt. And the 0-1 pitch to Allen. Too high. Fastball. 1-1. One one. Petroselli wide a third and even with the bag. Aparicio, the shortstop, playing Allen to pull. Guerrero, the second baseman, playing in the hole there. He's playing Allen to pull. Yastrzemski holding Michael at first. 1-1 one, one pitch. Curveball, top foul outside of first. 1-2. and two. One man out. Here in the third. No score. Red Sox Yankee games are always spine tinglers. Now the set by Colt. And the one-two pitch to Allen inside slider. It's two and two. Over the years, as long as these teams have been playing each other, the series is just about at 500. The Yankees might have won a couple of three more. Here's a two-two pitch to Allen. Curveball hit in the air to center. Reggie Smith is there. He's under. Calls for it, and he's got it. Two out. And here's John Callis in the right fielder. Callis has been up once, and he's fly to right. So he's 0 for 1. He's batting at 154. No home run, six runs batted in. They play Callis into pull. Oh, over the head with the set. Breaking balls, chopped foul outside of first. Big overhand curveball by Cope. Michael halfway down to second, turns around, he'll go back to first. Two men out, Michael at first. No score, bottom half the third inning. Cope hides that ball on his right hips. Now he brings it up, sets it to belt. Fastball down low. One and one. Roy White on deck. Hope taking a lot of time here with Callison. Still looking at Fisk. Still looking. Now he sets. And the one-one pitch to Callison. Fastball check swing fouled on the third base side. And it's one and two. Now Petroselli moves back a third, and he'll play wide a third. As Colt steps back up on the rubber. Comes set. A one-two pitch. Curveball swung on and missed, struck him up. A big bender by Ray Cope. Yes, Callison. That's Cope's first strikeout for the Yankees in the third. No runs on one hit. No errors. And they left one man on base. At the end of three, Yankees nothing, and the Red Sox nothing. Whenever there have been songs, they've sung of home. Or hills of home. Years beyond or within memory, home. Baby, won't you please come home I need? And now, home. In many ways, our name tells the story of the Home Savings Bank. Whatever savings program you choose, Home pays you the highest rates of interest on your savings allowed by law. No bank offers more than Home. The Home Savings Bank. Growing. 
with offices in Albany, Colony, Greenwich, Hoosick Falls, and Gilderland. Growing. Not to be big, just to be better. An FDIC member, where most offices are open Saturdays. Remember, whatever savings program you choose, home pays you the highest rates of interest on your savings allowed by law. Open a home savings account today. Right here, the score is nothing, nothing. Yankees, the Red Sox, as we go into the top half of the fourth, and here to take you over the next three, here's Frank Messer. Okay, Bill White, thank you very much, and good afternoon, everybody. Those uh, sort of steamy, muggy days here in New York. That sun's trying to burn through the overcast, and I think it will before the afternoon is over. Much brighter than it was when this game started. And the first pitch to Yastrzemski swung on in line foul into the seats down the right side. <laughs> Yastrzemski grounded out to Clark at second base his first time up. Next pitch, low and inside, evens it up at one and one. Carl Yastrzemski is one for eight in this series. Right now he's hitting 260 for the season. Next pitch, taken a bit low. Two and one. Mel Stottlemyre in his 20th start. One more games than any other Yankee pitcher this year. Ten. Bouncing ball hits first base. Bloomberg has it behind the bag. Underhands to Stottlemyre. He's out. Yastrzemski bounces out. Bloomberg to Stottlemyre. One away and bring up Orlando Cepeda, the designated hitter. Cepeda fly to left field his first trip. He's 0 for 6 in the series. Cepeda on the year is batting 289 with 12 home runs and 43 runs batted in. The legs are gone, the bat is still there. And as a designated hitter, he has a new life. On the outside corner, strike one. San Francisco has defeated Cincinnati 6-2. Donald Meyer to the windup and the pitch coming. Slider outside. Ball and a strike. The Baltimore came from behind to win that suspended game, Bill. Huh? So they sweep the doubleheader. Started yesterday and finished today. The next pitch here. Swung on and fouled back into the mezzanine to our right. A ball and two strikes to Orlando Cepeda. On deck, Rico Petroselli. No score in this ball game here in the top of the fourth. Bases empty and one out. Infield and outfield play Cepeda straight away and deep. Stottlemyre winds and delivers. Curveball is hit on the ground is short. Michael is up with it. Plenty of time to get it across. Cepeda is out two away. And the batter will be Rico Petroselli. He bounced out to Nettles at third his first trip. Petroselli is hitting 248. Ten home runs and 31 runs batted in. Takes the ball high and away. Home run by Elrod Hendricks. Won that game for Baltimore in the 10th inning. Came with a man on. Pitches down low. Two balls and no strikes. Stottlemyre working quickly. Delivers a curve for a strike call. Two and one. Petroselli right-hand batter. On deck, Carlton Fisk. No score. Two outs. Nobody on in the fourth inning. Big crowd here at the stadium today in the next pitch. Breaking ball for a strike, two and two. Petroselli looked at it. Each team has a pair of base hits. The windup by Stottlemyre in the pitch. Low and outside with a slider in the dirt. Three and two. Stottlemyre again, looking down to Munson. Starts the windup and delivers. Fastball is hit in the air to right field. 
Johnny Callison circling under it, backs up a step, reaches up, makes the catch, and that retires the side. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. And now at the end of the top half of the fourth inning, the score, Boston nothing and New York nothing. There's something new on the menu at McDonald's. Something big and thick and juicy. Something you can really sink your teeth into. It's McDonald's new Quarter Pounder and Quarter Pounder with cheese. Come and get it. You deserve a break today at McDonald's. Try McDonald's great new sandwich, the Quarter Pounder, available right now at all McDonald's in the Capital District and throughout the great Northeast. Hi, this is Jack Hockby. You know, WQBK is really unique in offering more good music, extensive sports coverage, and personal involvement, and that's why I'm happy that we can all be part of it. Weekdays at 3 and Saturday mornings at 6.30. Bottom half of the fourth inning, we'll see Roy White. Bobby Mercer and Ronnie Bloomberg coming on for the New York Yankees. White batting left. Culp winds and delivers. Breaking ball for ball one. White lined out to the right fielder. Just missed a home run. He had a line drive to Dwight Evans. His first time up. The next pitch to him. Curve ball is in. Strike call. Roy White is batting 247 right now. No score in this ball game. Golf delivers fast ball. It's high and deep, but it's going to be foul. Into the upper deck foul in right field. Ball and two strikes. Now the one-two pitch from Ray Culp. On the way, fastball low and away. Two balls, two strikes to Roy White. Yankees have two hits. However, they have not had a runner pass first base. The wind-up, 2-2 delivery, way outside. Off-speed pitch, 3-2. and two. Bernie Allen singled to the mound in the first inning. Golf went after the spinning grounder with his bare hand and missed it. Bernie got credit for a base hit. But then Callison, White, and Mercer all hit the ball in the air to right field. 3-2 pitch coming. Fastball is hit on one hop to second. Guerrero has it. Waits for Yastrzemski and now throws in plenty of time. White is out. Bobby Mercer now. He flied to right his first trip. Mercer is hitting 303. When this first game of the doubleheader ends, the Yankees will have played exactly half their season. This is their 81st game. The 4th of July, traditionally, the halfway mark of the season. And the first pitch to Mercer, fastball, has the plate low, ball one. However, it is not that often that it really is the halfway mark as far as games are concerned. But in this case, yes. 1-0 pitch to Bobby. Swung on, popped up foul outside of third. Petra Sully after it, but the barrier stops him. It's in the seats about three rows. 1-1. One one. Yankees coming into the 4th of July doubleheader with 46 wins and 34 losses. Overall here at Yankee Stadium, the Yankees are 29 and 13. They've won 14 of their last 15 games at home. The pitch to Mercer, fouled off. Ball and two strikes. In double headers this year, the Yankees have won four, lost none, and split two. the 
wind up. One two pitch. Foul back again. Ball and two strikes to Bobby Mercer. Yankees thus in doubleheader play this year of 110 and lost two games. And the one-two pitch again to Bobby. Outside and high. Two balls and two strikes. Bloomberg on deck. One out and nobody aboard. No score here in the lower half of the fourth inning. Kolf has the sign. Veteran right-hander rocks and delivers. Curveball is hit deep but foul to right field. Mercer got around on it, pulled into the seats, but a foul ball. The count holds at two and two. They really shift around on Mercer with Aparicio almost behind second base. Guerrero way over in the hole. Yastrzemski is deep. Smith in right center. Evans backs up in right field. Very shallow in left, though. The pitch. Long on. There it goes. Long drive. Out of the right. Bye-bye, Bobby. Home run number 15 for Bobby Mercer. Yankees lead one to nothing. This is the New York Yankee Baseball Network. We pause for station identification. Hi, baseball fans. This is Bill Edwardson. And if you want to have a little music to go along with your scores and sports comments, why don't you join me in the morning on Breakfast with Bill. 7 o'clock right here at WQBK and WQBK-FM Rensselaer. Ronnie Bloomberg steps in. We'll tell you about the baseball gloves in a moment. The pitch to Bloomberg swung on and fouled away to the left side. For the Bobby Mercer home run, nine Wilson baseball gloves, courtesy of APCO Financial Services, will be set out to the Henry Street Settlement League in New York City. That's Henry Street Settlement, New York City. No balls and a strike to Bloomberg. Next pitch, swung on, and hit foul down the right side. Bloomberg is hitting 393 right now after hitting back to the pitcher his first time up. Greg Nettles is on deck. There is one out. Golf into the windup. The kick and the pitch. And it's inside. Bloomberg checked the swing. He spun around, but ruled he was getting away from the pitch. One ball and two strikes to Bloomberg. Ronnie Bloomberg, a much more relaxed ball player. He may have uh, pulled that leg just a little bit getting away from that pitch. He stood out a long time. Now he's back in. The windup by Culp, the pitch to Bloomberg. Swing and a miss struck him out. Bloomberg strikes out on a breaking pitch. And that'll be the second strikeout for Culp. Greg Nettles now. He flied deep to the center fielder, Smith, his first time up. Greg hit the ball 400 feet as Smith went back to the 407 sign in right center to make the catch. First pitch from Culp to Nettles. Strike call on the inside corner. With that one anyway, Culp jammed him. And Nettles took it over the inside corner, 0-1. There's the wind, here's the next pitch. Fastball is low and away. At the end of two innings, Milwaukee nothing, Baltimore nothing in their regularly scheduled game. Here's the 1-1 offering. Strike on the outside corner, 1 and 2. Baltimore won the suspended game 6-4, thus giving them a sweep of yesterday's doubleheader. The windup, the 1-2 pitch. Inside, almost hit him. Nettle stepped into it, then had to spin away at the last instant and was almost hit by the pitch at that. Yankees leading 1-0 on the Mercer homer. Two outs, nobody on. Ray Culp to the windup, the 2-2 pitch. Curveball off the dirt. 
off the plate rather bounces away three and two. Well, we said the sun would burn through this overcast, and it has. We see a lot of blue sky now. The lights have been on since the start of the ball game here at Yankee Stadium. But now, blue sky overhead. The wind-up, 3-2 pitch. Hit on the ground a second. Guerrero comes up with it on a knee-high pounce, gets it over to Yastrzemski, and that retires the side. One run on one hit. No errors, nobody left. And now, at the end of the fourth inning, the score, New York 1 and Boston nothing. Boston Spa National Bank introduces its new free personal checking account service. Write as many checks as you want without a service charge by maintaining an average monthly balance of $400 or more. And if you prefer to maintain a lower monthly average balance, Boston Spa National's new personal checking account plan permits you to write as many checks as you want for a fixed monthly charge based on your average balance. No minimum balance required, no charge for deposits, no charge if you don't use your account. You get an initial supply of personalized checks free, a statement every month, and you can enjoy unlimited use of your account at no charge just by keeping an average balance of $400 or more. You may want to take advantage of Boston Spa National's bonus-free services, too. Computerized automatic payment service. Authorized for funds to be transferred automatically from your checking account to build your savings account or make your mortgage loan payments or car loan or any installment loan payment. Even your Christmas club payments can be automatic. Pick up a folder at your nearest office of Boston Spa National Bank for full details in Boston Spa and Burnt Hills. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. They go to the fifth inning here at Yankee Stadium. The Yankees now leading one to nothing on the Bobby Mercer home run. And it'll be Carlton Fisk, White Evans, and Luis Aparicio for the Red Sox. Well, this grand old country of ours celebrating its 197th birthday today. And celebrating right along with it, Hal Lanier, his 31st. Hal's a Yankee doodle dandy. Right along with George M. Cohan. Probably a few thousand others born on the 4th of July. This single left field, his first trip, he's batting 288. Right hand hitter. And the first pitch to him. Curveball is in for a call strike. You look down there at home plate right now, and you may be seeing the two finest young catchers in the American League, Carlton Fisk and Thurman Munson. Doesn't seem to be a doubt that uh, Fisk will start in the All-Star game. We'd certainly like to see Thurman Munson also be named to that team because I, for one, and I'm sure a lot of other folks join me, think that uh, he deserves it. There's a strike, and it is 0-2. Donald Meyer waits for Fisk, who steps out, now comes back in. They play him just about up the middle. The infield a step maybe to the left side. The wind up, the 0-2 delivery. Fastball is popped up on the right side. Bloomberg is calling for it. He's under it, and he makes the catch. Fisk is retired, one out. And now Dwight Evans, the right fielder, flied to right field his first time up. Well, now, ladies and gentlemen, we not only have blue skies, but we also have sunshine here at Yankee Stadium. The sun has burned through. A few clouds way out away from us, and they seem to be drifting away. One out, nobody on. The wind-up by Mel and his pitch swung on and hit in the air to center field. Mercer is there. Waiting for it, and Evans is out, two down. Luis Aparicio, the batter. Aparicio doubled the left field in the third inning, and that's as far as he got was second base. Stottlemyre came up with the biggest play, I think, in the ball game when he struck out Mario Guerrero. Guerrero, of course, was trying to move Aparicio over to third, and Stottlemyre struck him out only the fourth time this year Guerrero has struck out. A strike one to Aparicio. Guerrero had gone to bat 69 straight times without striking out. Corner men are in. Nettles shallower than Bloomberg. And the 0-1 pitch. Low. 1-1. One one. Nettles in past the bag. Bloomberg maybe a step back of the bag on the right side. Allen deep. 
Michael in about a third of the way at short. Curveball is in on the ground at third. Nettles is up with it. Skips and throws. And that's all for Aparicio and the Red Sox. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And at the end of the top half of the fifth inning, the score, the Yankees won and the Red Sox, nothing. Ray Hart will lead off. We go to the bottom half of the fifth inning. Right hand batter, Jim Ray is hitting 242. Popped up his first trip. And he looks at a curve down, low ball one. Hart, Munson, and Michael, the lower third of the batting order. Next pitch. Taking low and outside, ball two. Golf is keeping the ball away from Jim Ray Hart. Red Sox playing just a little bit to the left side. Not much. 2-0 delivery. High ball three. Culp hides the ball behind the right leg as he takes the sign. Now starts to wind up. 3-0 delivery. He is taken for a strike three and one. Now the third baseman, Petrosulli, backs off deep, and the pitch is lined foul outside of third. Dick Hauser giving ground on that one. Third base coach getting out of the way of it. Full count, three and two on Jim Ray Hart. Culp wants an exchange of baseballs. Did not like the one set out by Evans. Culp again takes the sign. And the 3-2 pitch. Broken bat, fly ball out into left field. Coming in for it is Miller. He's there and he makes the catch. Hart broke the bat on that one, or so it sounded. And the bat boy takes a look at it. Goose Melchior, I believe, is going to toss that one into the wood pile. Thurman Munson now. Two for seven in this series. He singled his first time up in this game and then was forced at second base by Gene Michael. Munson is hitting 287 as he steps in. Kopp into the windup and the pitch to Thurman. Curveball for a strike. No balls and one strike to Thurman. The Yankees are leading one to nothing on a Mercer home run in the fourth inning. One out, the base is empty. The pitch taken for a strike, a breaking ball, 0-2. Slider that time from Culp. Yankees and Red Sox wind it up tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. Then the Yankees will go on the road for seven games. The 0-2 pitch. Fastball on outside, one and two. Yankees have two single games and a doubleheader against the Twins in Minnesota and three single games against the White Sox in Chicago. Yankees have not lost in Minnesota. They have not won in Chicago. One-two pitch. Fastball is swung on a miss, strike three. Munson fans, third strikeout for Culp. And now Gene Michael. The stick will bat left-handed against the right-hand pitching Culp. Michael grounded into a force with a 
Ground ball to Guerrero, the second baseman, his first time up. There are two outs and nobody on. Golf kicks and deals. Breaking ball, but it's low. Had the plate downstairs. 1-0. and oh. When this game started, there was quite a traffic jam, we understand, outside as people tried to get into the stadium. So we hope everybody got in, settled comfortably. Michael swings and lines a foul ball into the right field corner. Well back in the seats, but foul. One and one. Stick has hit some long balls this year. He has three home runs, one triple, eight doubles. Culp winds. Here's the pitch. And he checked the swing. Wait umpire. Jimmy Evans asked the third base umpire, George Maloney, to call it. Two balls and one strike. Two outs and nobody on. The windup and the next pitch. Fastball is low ball three. This umpiring crew has come under some fire from a couple of managers in the American League, namely Billy Martin of the Tigers and more recently Earl Weaver of the Baltimore Orioles. But I'll tell you one thing, there's not an umpire, just as there's not a ball player that takes the field without trying to do his very best. There's a pitch foul back, and it is just over the TV section into the mezzanine. You may not agree with a call sometimes, but you can know one thing 100% in your mind that that umpire that made the call was sure when he made it he was right. 3-2 pitch, swung on a miss, strike three. Michael fans, that's four for Culp. And the Yankees are out in order, nothing across. At the end of five innings of play here at Yankee Stadium, the score is New York 1 and Boston nothing. Live modern this summer. Live cool this summer. With Fetters, the room air conditioner of excellence. The linkage of two words, fetters and excellence, began more than 75 years ago. The company's founder established his business on the principle that if you build a product exceptionally well, your customers will be exceptionally loyal. When you buy a fetters product, you know that it has been engineered with an extra measure of care, manufactured with an extra measure of concern, fabricated of materials that offer an extra assurance of dependability. Though the cost of living is going up, Fetters actually keeps the cost of room air conditioners down with its Super Saver and Silver Anniversary Specials. There's a Fetters room air conditioner model available to meet your particular cooling requirements. See them, then live modern, live cool with Fetters at Rensselaer Appliance Rensselaer, Irwin's TV Latham, and Exchange TV Albany. Bill Kane, uh, am I not correct? And looking down to the box seats by the Yankee dugout, isn't Mrs. Garrick down there now? She was there uh, before the game started. And yes, now as the folks move around a little bit, I do recognize her. And a youngster down there asking for an autograph. Now, Lou Gehrig had passed away long before that youngster was born, but names like that never fade away. The Lou Gehrigs, the Babe Ruths, the Roberto Clementis, and so many, many others. And now a little girl down there, also getting the autograph. And here we go to the sixth inning. Leading off, Mario Guerrero, the second baseman. He struck out in the third inning. Trying to move Aparicio, who had let off with a double to third. He struck out. Stottlemyre got Miller on a ground ball and Smith on a ground ball to get out of trouble. The first pitch to him, curve, but it's high, ball one. Mel had the plate upstairs. Guerrero was traded to the Red Sox by the Yankees along with Danny Cater for Sparky Lyle. 1 0 pitch, fast and low, ball two. And as it turned out, that was certainly one of the better trades the Yankees have made in a long, long time. There's a fastball for a strike, and it's two and one. I take nothing away from Cater and Guerrero when I say that, but you know the job that Lyle has done for the Yankee ball club. 2-1 pitch. Get on the ground is short. Big high hop for Michael. He's got it. Throws on to first base to retire Guerrero. One away. 
Stottlemyre has retired 10 men in a row now since the double by Aparicio leading off the third inning. Yankees out in front, one to nothing, and it brings up Rick Miller, the left fielder and a left-hand batter. Miller has flied to right and grounded out to first. Pulled the ball both times. Donald Myers first pitch to him. Fastball for a strike. When Stottle Myers uh, last start against the Cleveland Indians, he just relaxed out there and pitched a beautiful ball game. Allowed only four base hits to get his tenth win. Now the one strike pitch. It is dragged down the first baseline. Bloomberg after it. He's got it. He steps on the bag. And that is all for Miller. He dragged the butt, but he pulled it right down the line. Bloomberg waited for the ball to get there. Bloomberg played it very well, fielded it, and then just reached out with the left foot and stabbed the bag for the unassisted put out. Two down, and Reggie Smith, the batter. Switch hitter will bat left. Reggie Smith is, well, he's actually the only switch hitter on this ball club now that the pitchers don't uh, bat. I believe Roger Morat and Bob Veal when they did hit were switch hitters first pitch to him swung out and fouled back into the mezzanine on the left side strike one Smith is 0 for 2 batting average of 278 as he steps in he's lost uh, a couple of points today slightly closed stance and he crowds the plate with his right foot the right elbow hangs out over the plate here comes the pitch to him swung out and bounced foul outside of first no balls and two strikes. Yankees leading one to nothing on a home run by Bobby Mercer. He is 15th of the year. Two outs and nobody on here in the top of the sixth inning. Ball game has moved right along. Stottlemyre winds and deals. A curveball is lined out over Michael in the center field base hit. Smith timed it perfectly on that one, and on an 0-2 pitch, lines a base hit into center. And that's something you won't see Stottlemyre do too often, give up a base hit on 0-2. Third hit in the ball game for the Red Sox. And the batter is Carl Yastrzemski. Yaz is grounded to second and grounded out to first. He's pulled the ball both times, but on the ground. Bloomberg will hold Smith on, and Bernie Allen will have to edge more to his left to try to close up the right side. First pitch to Yaz. Low with a fastball. Ball one. Carl Yastrzemski is batting 259. He has 10 home runs and 42 runs batted in. the sign, brings the hands together, holds the set and now delivers, low, tried to work it over the outside corner, looked like he had the plate, but it must have been low, as Jimmy Evans says, two balls, no strikes, on deck, Orlando Cepeda, Reggie Smith, the base runner at first, Takes a short lead as Stottlemyre checks him. Now the pitch to Yastrzemski is hit in the air to center field. Mercer going back. Flips the glasses. He's under it. And he makes the catch in deep center to retire the side. No runs. One hit. No errors. And one man left. At the end of the top half of the sixth inning, the score. The New York Yankees won and the Boston Red Sox nothing. Mr. John E. Kelly of Topsfield, Massachusetts, recently traded his 1971 Subaru for a new 1973 Subaru four-door sedan. As Mr. Kelly told us, I'm a salesman and I drive for a living. When I first drove a Subaru back in 1971, I was sold on the front-wheel drive. In two years, I drove over 91,000 miles and I spent less than $20 for normal maintenance. So I naturally bought a second Subaru. No other car can touch him for economy and dependability. Not at 30 miles per gallon. It's a lot of car for very little money. Everything else I'd want, like uh, the radio and the deluxe interior, is included. A Subaru is a great car. Every day, more people trade for a Subaru with a quadrizontal engine. Test drive one yourself and see why.
Your new Subaru dealer in Capital Land is Fred Carl's New Salem Garage. The area's oldest and largest Saab dealer now stocks a complete line of Subaru. Fred Carl's New Salem Garage, Route 85, New Salem. We go to the bottom half of the sixth inning and the top of the batting order up for New York. Bernie Allen, Johnny Callison, and Roy White. Bernie Allen is one for two in this ball game. Sort of gifted with a base hit in the first inning by Ray Culp. Did a little squibber back to the third base side of the mound, and Culp tried to pick it up barehanded. Ball had a lot of English on it, and he missed it. And Allen got a base hit. First pitch to Bernie. Swung on, hit sharply to the right side, and it's knocked down by Yastrzemski. Picks up, throws. He's out at first base. Culp raced over there to cover. Yastrzemski to his right, knocked the ball down, chased it, retrieved it, and fired it to Culp just in time to get Bernie Allen. Early in his career, that would have been a base hit for Bernie, but a knee operation took away a lot of his speed. So oh, there's one out, and Johnny Callison, the batter. Callison hitting 152. The wind-up by Culp, the pitch to John. Strike with a curve. Callison has plied out and struck out, 0 for 2. Culp has fanned four in this ball game. He has not walked anybody. The Yankees have one run on three hits. The big hit, a home run by Bobby Mercer in the fourth. That's the only run in the ball game. The next pitch to Callison. Swung on and bounced back to the mound. Culp has it. Throws on to first base, and Callison is out. Two down, and Roy White the batter. In the first inning, you might have thought, if you were here watching the ball game, that the Yankees would take care of Culp in short order. After Bernie Allen had the infield hit, Callison just missed a home run, had a good rip, and just got under the pitch. Roy White hit one right on the nose, but a line drive that was caught by the right fielder Evans back at the seats. And then Bobby Mercer hit one into the corner that was just, uh, that he just missed, just got under. But since then, Culp, except for the homer by Mercer, has been untouchable. The pitch now to White, high and away, ball one. Munson did single in the third, but could not advance past first base. Since the home run by Mercer, there has not been a base runner. Seven men in a row. There's a strike. One and one. He uses the curveball again. Coming into this game, Culp had pitched 19 innings, allowed 15 hits, walked 15, and struck out 15. 1-1 one, one delivery. Found down the third base line and a foul ball. Sorry to say it was fouled down the third baseline and just then it kicked fair, but it rolled foul. One ball, two strikes, two outs, the bases are empty. Bobby Mercer, whose home run is the only run in this game, is on deck. Culp winds, one-two pitch. Swung on and lined into right field. It's a fair ball base hit. Foul ball. I'm sorry, beg your pardon. I thought it hit right on the line, and John Rice says, no, Frank, that's foul. So it's a ball and two strikes to Roy White. Culp winds again. The one-two pitch. Fastball. Foul this time. No question about that one. Over toward the seats on the ground. Two outs. The base is empty. A ball and two strikes to Roy White. And the clouds have come back again. Culp starts the windup now. And the one-two pitch to White. Curveball is lined to right. And again, foul. Evans retrieves the ball down in the corner, flips it back to the ball boy. New ball put in play. First of all, though, the catcher, Carlton Fisk, rubs it up for his pitcher.
Now the wind. One, two, pitch to White. Strike three, says Jimmy Evans. White is going to argue it. On the outside corner, evidently. And that is number five for Culp. Three up, three down. Nothing across for the Yankees at the end of six innings. It's New York one and Boston nothing. Blue Cross and Blue Shield believe there's more to good health than just paying bills. So we have a community education program offering booklets tuned to today's health problems. Currently available are The Will to Die, a frank discussion on the causes of suicide, an alarming problem among the young and the old. Another popular booklet, Food and Fitness, a simple guide to the relationship between exercise and proper food to your good health. Our third offering, The Alcoholic American, He's not a Bowery bum. He probably lives right in your block or may be a member of your family. The drug war goes on, and our booklet, Drug Abuse, the Chemical Cop-Out, has been updated. Middle age has its problems, many of which are discussed in the booklet, Generation in the Middle. And perhaps you might be able to communicate with your teenager better with our booklet called Adolescence for Adults. If you wish any of these free books, send a card to Blue Cross, Box 8650, Albany, New York. This is the New York Yankee Baseball Network. We pause for station identification. Hi, this is Jack Hopke. WQBK AM and FM Rensselaer bring you sports in the afternoons when there aren't Yankee games, too, with Dave Smith at 15 minutes before each hour on the Jack Hopke Show, 3 until 7. OTB results, stocks and news, as well as a lot of good music. Stop by some afternoon. Yankee Stadium, and ready to step in with a play-by-play, ladies and gentlemen. Here is Phil Rizzuto. Hi, Frank. Thank you very much. We got another exciting ball game, another pitchers battle. Seems like that's all we've been having since the Yankees returned home. Great series with the Detroit Tigers and a free hitting series with Cleveland. This is a pitchers battle. Cepeda bounces one to third. Nettles is up with it. Takes plenty of time because Orlando can't run and throws him out. Cepeda now has fly deep to left, bounced to short, and bounced to third. Rico Petroselli is the batter. Rico has bounced to third and fly to right field. First pitch a little low, ball one. On deck, Carlton Fisk. Stottlemyre's pitch hit in the air to center field. Hit well, but Bobby Mercer's right there. And makes the catch. There are two away. Now Carlton Fisk, who single a left in the second inning, popped to first in the fifth inning. Carlton hitting 287. Nettles. At third, deep in back of the bag and guarding the line. As you know, in uh, the late innings, you don't want that extra base hit. You'll give him the single, but not the double. Two out, nobody on. Fisk, like Munson, makes the pitcher wait out there. And a day like this, the pitcher does not like to wait. Stottlemyre over the head. Pitch to Fisk is over. Strike one call. Fisk again steps back. It's a little dirt. On deck, Dwight Evans. Now he's ready. Stottlemyre ready. The one-strike pitch has popped up. Greg Nettles, the third baseman. And Greg makes the catch in fair territory. Halfway between home and third, and Stottlemyre has another one, two, three inning. Nothing across, and in the middle of the seventh, the Yankees won and the Red Sox nothing. I write of love, and I write how roses first came red. For a while now, we at the Getty Oil Company have been selling premium gasoline for a few cents less per gallon than most other major premiums. So you get extra gas for your money. 
Now I'd like to tell you how much extra gas. If you drive around 12,000 miles a year and you fill up with Getty Premium, you'll get about 75 extra gallons. Now let me tell you how much 75 extra gallons is. It's enough gas to take you about 1,000 miles. It's more gas than the average driver uses in a month. If you weighed it, it would come out to about 500 pounds. If you had to buy it, it would cost you around $30. It's enough gas to fill up the average gas tank from empty to full four times. It's enough gas to fill up your lawnmower, your chainsaw, your motorcycle, and maybe even your son's motorbike. Well, you're going to hear some noise now because the leadoff man will be Bobby Mercer. narrowly missed a home run his first time up. It went down in the right field corner, but the second time up in the fourth inning, he hit one into the Yankee bullpen, and Hal Lanier, who's celebrating his 31st birthday today, caught the ball cleanly without a glove in the Yankee bullpen. But it goes as a home run because it was out of the park. The pitch to Mercer. Curve is low, ball one. Bobby batting 305, 15 homers, 56 runs batted in. The 1 0 delivery, curve low and away, ball 2, 2 0. Neither pitcher has walked a man, each has allowed three bases. Pope has struck out five, Stottlemyre has struck out one. Ronnie Bloomberg on deck. The 2 0 pitch, fouled back. Bobby went after a slider up around the letters. That's a good pitch to hit out of the park. It's also a tough pitch to hit. Two balls and a strike. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Yankees lead 1-0. Bobby wiping his wrist on his uniform. Now he's ready. Oh, been to the windup. Curve hit in the air to center field, but Smith moves back. Back and makes the catch backing up. Bobby hit the ball well, but he knows better than to hit it out in Death Valley. One away. Now Ronnie Bloomberg. Today is the first day we have not seen Ronnie hit the ball hard, even when he makes out. He has bounced out to the box and struck out. So I would say he is due to cream one right about now. The overshift on again. They really overshift on White, Mercer, Bloomberg, and Nettles. He bounces one right to Aparicio, playing him perfectly, and Louis throws him out. The overshift really worked that time. That play goes six to three, even though Aparicio fielded on the uh, second base side of the bag. Two out, and now Greg Nettles slides deep to center and bounce to second. Again, uh, as we said, uh, Mercer, Bloomberg, and Nettles, they really overshift. And for Nettles, Aparicio is even more towards first base than he was for Bloomberg or Mercer. I said it from up here, you got a beautiful view of this defensive alignment. There's a pitch outside. And from down in the dugout, you can't see it quite as clearly as you do up here because all uh, infields are turtleback shaped. And you can't see the complete ball player out there. That curve low and outside ball two. And even the hitter, even though he's looking out there, it doesn't look as wide open as it does from up here. And I would think later on, maybe still in this ball game or the next time they play the Red Sox, there'll be a few left-hand hitters just punching that ball through short. Nobody's playing shortstop. Or bunting the ball down third because Petroselli is playing a deep third base and shallow left field. No way he could get Nettles on a bunt. The 2-0 delivery on the outside corner, 2-1. On deck, Jim Ray Hart. Culp lines. Curve fouled off the end of the bat as Nettles went down on one knee. Culp has really been keeping the Yankee hitters off stride. 
with his slow curve and his changeup, and then he's got that fast slider. And moving the ball out and in. Now Ray is ready. His 2-2 pitch hits as bad as he tried to check his swing on a slider in on him. Count holds at 2-2. Two and two. So Baltimore, son of a gun, they came back, tied the game, and then won it in uh, 10 innings, a suspended game. They won it 6-4, but now Milwaukee's leading 3 to nothing at the end of three of the regularly scheduled games. Again, the 2-2 pitch, a bounce to the first base. Gostrzemski will take it himself. And another easy inning for Ray Culp. Three up and three down. And at the end of seven full innings, it's the Yankees one, the Red Sox nothing. Saving gasoline this summer season will help your area be ready for the coming winter. Eliminate needless trips, combine trips with neighbors, and where possible, use public transportation. This is Ray Schuler, New York State Transportation Commissioner, asking you to do your part to conserve fuel while helping the environment. In 1774, Samuel Francis encouraged revolutionaries to meet in his tavern to plot against the English. This early patriot was a black man. Today, we at the United Negro College Fund want to make it easier for young blacks to help make this country what it should be. Give to the United Negro College Fund, 55 East 52nd Street, New York, New York, 10022. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. We got another big ball game to go after this one. And it'll be young Dr. Medich for the Yankees and young Roger Moret for the Red Sox. Then tomorrow the Yankees and Red Sox conclude this five-game uh, series played in four days with a 2 o'clock start. Some of you on your schedule might say 6 p.m., but make sure you get here at 2 because by 6 the game will be over. Dwight Evans has fly to right and fly to center. Stottlemyre's curve is low, ball one. Yankees out in front, one to nothing. Curve swing and a miss, strike one, one to one. A one one delivery. Curve, strike two, and Nick the corner. Evans did not like the call. A good pitch by Stoudemire. Just about a perfect pitch. A ball and two strikes. Evans leading off here in the top of the eighth. The one-two sidearm, a bounce foul outside of third. Eddie Popowski, the coach for the Red Sox at third base. Eddie, a New Jersey boy from over in the Amboys. Very popular third base coach. All right, Mel gets a new baseball. And again is one two pitch, a curve foul again down the left field line. This time knocked down by George Maloney, the umpire at third. Count still holds a ball and two strikes. Evans, a right-hand batter. One-two pitch, ground ball is short. Gene Michael up with it. Fires to Bloomberg, and there's one away. The batter, Luis Saparicio. Little Louis has double the left and bounced to third base. Saparicio went to Lenox Hill Hospital after the game yesterday. He thought he might have rebroken that finger, that finger of his, but it's just a loose cartilage floating around in there. It's painful, but he is able to play. And it is on his left hand. Pitch to Louie, a curve in there, strike one call. Nettles even with the bag at third, and Bloomberg even with the bag at first. Curve in the dirt, oh, nice play. Hit Munson's glove, and Aparicio grabbed it and gave it to Thurman. One-on-one. 
Louis always has had the quick hand, as does Munson. On deck, Mario Guerrero. The 1 1 pitch, low and away, 2 1. Mel kicks, delivers, ground ball a second. Bernie Allen right there, up with it. Over to Bloomberg, and there are two away. And now Guerrero, who struck out in the third. Now, that was Stottlemyre's only strikeout. And Mel, when he needs the strikeout, seems to be able to get it in clutch situations. He did it in the last game he pitched. He only got one strikeout, but it was a big one. This time, Aparicio led off with a double. Guerrero is trying to go to right field to advance Louis to third with only one out. But Mel struck him out. And remember, Guerrero had not struck out in his last 69 at bats and this was only the fourth time he's been struck out all year then the very next batter Miller hit a slow bounce to first that would have scored Aparicio had Guerrero been able to advance him and Mel got out of the inning two out the pitch is a curve inside ball one on deck Rick Miller two out nobody on Yankees in front one or nothing Fastball right in there, one on one. Well, the Orioles have changed pitchers, so maybe Milwaukee's doing something else down there in Baltimore. Mike Cuellar started, but he's out of there. And Eddie White has come on. There's a line drive, base hit to left field. Roy White is up with it with two out. Guerrero lines a single to left. That's the fourth hit off Stottlemyre. The batter, Rick Miller, fly to right, twice bounced out to first base. Miller, a left-hand batter. Two out in the top of the eighth inning. Another big ball game to go after this one. Bloomberg holds the bag against Guerrero. Mario has one stolen base. Have to keep an eye on him. Throw to first. He's back. Time call. Miller had stepped out. Now he's back in. Stretch by Stottlemyre. The pitch is bounced slowly to first base. Bloomberg backhands it. Flips the start of my They got a beautiful play by Bloomberg that time. Took a base hit away from Rick Miller and led Stottlemyre perfectly. No runs, a base hit, no errors, a man left. At the middle of the eighth inning, it's the Yankees one and the Red Sox nothing. <laughs> Good people make good times. Second, good beer makes good times even better. And third, the good brewers at Schaefer make good time beer best of all. Beer that comes on smooth and easy glass after frosty cold glass. Beer that comes a cut above the others. And that's the beer you've got coming. Schaefer, the one beer to have when you're having more than one. We'll lead it off for the Yankees here. In the bottom of the eighth inning, the Yankees out in front, one to nothing on Bobby Mercer's 15th home run in the fourth inning. Hart has popped the short and fly to left. Jim Ray broke his bat last time up. He's got a new one. And the pitch is hit one hop. Pass gets Gretzky. Holy cow, Yaz is really embarrassed. One hopper went right under his glove. He had the glove belt high going to give Jim Ray Hart a hit. Oh, 
tell you, Stretsky was the most surprised man in the ball box when the ball went under his glove. Was not hit hard. So a base hit. Now each team with four hits. Here's Thurman Munson. Single to left and struck out. And the Yankees now trying to get an insurance run or two here as they go into the ninth inning. Kostrensky holding the bag against Jim Ray. Stretch by Culp. Pitch to Thurman. Swing and a miss. Strike one. And Culp is tricky out on the mound. Sometimes he'll step towards first when he delivers a pitch. And it's got to throw the hitter off. And sometimes he'll throw the pitch outside, other times inside. Nobody out in the bottom of the eighth. The Yanks in front, one nothing. The kick and the pitch foul back off the umpire's chest protector. It's nothing and two. Culp didn't like the feel of that baseball. Gets another one. Reggie Smith in center field is shading Munson slightly towards left center field. A lot of room down the right field line for Thurman. Miller straight away and left. And the infield deep and straight away, except for Yastrzemski, who's holding the bag against Hart. Here's the stretch by Culp. The two-strike pitch, low and outside a ball in two strikes. Big crowd here today for this twin bill with the Red Sox. Yankees lead 1-0 here in the bottom of the eighth of the first game. Milwaukee now leads 4-0 at the end of four over the Orioles. Low, blocked nicely by Fisk. It's 2-2. Two and two. On deck, Gene Michael. Two balls, two strikes, nobody out. Culp comes to the belt. Low and outside, ball three. So now, I would have to say Jim Rayhart will be running. Three and two, nobody out. Try and keep out of the double play. Thurman Munson has struck out 31 times this year, but he's been about 270 times. The stretch, the run is going. Foul out of play. The ball went right in the Red Sox broadcasting booth, but nobody tried for it. Not the old spirit. All right, still three and two on Munson. Jim Ray Hart takes a short lead and then takes off. Here's the stretch. He's going. Foul again out of play, and Hart comes back. Fresh supply of baseballs brought up to plate umpire Evans. Remember, neither pitcher has walked a man. It's been a very, very well-pitched ball game. All right, hard at first. Still a 3-2 count on Munson. Stretch by Culp. Hart goes. The ball is fouled back again. And Jim Ray is doing more running than he has done all year. Three times he's been taken off, going to second, and three times he's had to come back. Munson guarding the plate. He knows if he misses the pitch, they got a good shot of doubling Hart off at second base. Hart does not have any stolen bases this year. Again, we'll have the 3-2 delivery. Hart goes. Curve fouled again. <laughs> we get Jim Ray in shape for sure here. He'll shed a few pounds. Still 3-2 and two on Munson. Nobody out in the bottom of the eighth inning. 
Yankees trying to add to their one and nothing lead. Again, a 3-2 pitch, but this time a throw to first. Hard right, back easily. All right, call back on the rubber. The stretch. Hot right, going. Another foul out of play. Five times. Hot right, back to first base again. Five consecutive foul balls by Munson on three two counts. And he's making Culp pitch, and Culp is coming in there. Quite a duel between Culp and Munson. Here's the stretch. There goes Hart. Struck him out. Throw to second. They got a double play. And that's what they were afraid of. But Munson strikes out. The play goes from Fisk to Guerrero to cut down Jim Ray Hart. Six times Hart started for second, and the sixth time he didn't make it. Two out, Gene Michael has bounced into a force play and struck out. Beautiful throw by Carlton Fisk, by the way. Took his time and fired a strike. And now they want to move Reggie Smith. He had been playing way over in right center field. And they move him back towards center field. He's still slightly in right center on Gene Michael. Stick over for 2. Curve is low and outside. Ball one. Two men are out. Yankees in front, one nothing. bottom of the eighth. Swing and a foul tip, one of mine. Gene was going for the seats on that swing. With two out, nobody on. Good time to try it. Did he got two strikes on you anyway? The 1 1 pitch is line to right center field. Reggie Smith digging over and makes the running catch. No runs, a base hit, no errors, nobody left. At the end of eight, the Yankees won, the Red Sox nothing. Live modern this summer. Live cool this summer with Fetters, the room air conditioner of excellence. The linkage of two words, Fetters and excellence, began more than 75 years ago. The company's founder established his business on the principle that if you build a product exceptionally well, your customers will be exceptionally loyal. And when you buy a Fetters product, you know that it has been engineered with an extra measure of care, manufactured with an extra measure of concern, fabricated of materials that offer an extra assurance of dependability. Though the cost of living is going up, Fetters actually keeps the cost of room air conditioners down with its super saver and silver anniversary specials. There's a Fetters room air conditioner model available to meet your particular cooling requirements. See them, then live modern, live cool with Fetters. At Harold Drew's Appliance, Albany, Cohoes Tobacco Company, Cohoes, and Columbia Electric, Valencia. All right, this is it. Toughest three outs in baseball, a one or nothing lead in the ninth inning. And Mel Stottlemyre will be pitching to Reggie Smith, Carl Yastrzemski, and Orlando Cepeda. Smith has bounced a second, bounced a short, and single to center field. Reggie batting 281. All right, Mel Stottlemyre on the mound. Nettles is even with the bag at third. Here's Mel's first pitch to Smith. Low and outside, ball one. And you hear the crowd yelling, defense, defense. The 1-0 delivery. Line drive, base hit to right field. Johnny Callison up with it, and Reggie Smith opens the top of the ninth with a line single to right field, and here comes Ralph Hauk. Ralph Hauk is coming out. Uh, 
this could mean that we might see the count again. We'll wait and see. Dottlemeyer pitching an extremely strong ball game. That was the fifth hit he had allowed. He had not walked anybody. And he wants the left-hander, so it's going to be Sparky Lyle again. Tell you, normally, pitchers would get very, very upset to be taken out of ball games like this, but they know with Sparky Lyle or Fred Bean or Lindy McDaniel being called on, their chances of winning the ball game are just as good as they have stayed in there. And you hear the crowd now as Toby Wright on the organ starts playing pomp and circumstance. And the Dotson. Sparky steps out. Sparky to loosen up. This is the New York Yankee Baseball Network, and we pause for station identification. Hi, Dave Smith here with an invitation to all sports fans to give me a call some night on Sports Talk. The number, 462-5555. Weekday nights from 7 till 9, Sundays too. This is WQBK AM and FM, Rensselaer. So Sparky Lyle coming on with a 1.89 earned run average. He's 1-2, lost 3, making his 31st appearance of the year. He has 21 saves, the most in the majors. And he'll be facing Carl Yastrzemski. Yaz is over 3, bounce to second, bounce to first, slide deep to center. Sparky Lyle comes on. Sparky's last appearance is he has worked seven and one-third hitless innings. So he needs all of his cunning and his best slider right now. Reggie Smith at first. Nobody out. The stretch by Lyle. And the pitch. High ball one. On deck, Orlando Cepeda. Yankees leading one nothing. Top of the ninth. Stretch by Sparky. Pitch, round ball, base hit the right field. But Reggie Smith had it stop and will have to hold at second base. The ball almost hit Reggie Smith, a hard ground single to right field by Carl Yastrzemski. And the Red Sox now with runners at first and second, nobody out in Orlando to pay to the batter. We'll see how Eddie Casco plays this, whether he'll have Orlando budding. But if he has him hitting away, if he hits the ball on the ground, nine out of ten chances it'd be a double play. Oh, Lyle in a jam. Giving up his first hit in the last seven and a third innings that he's pitched. Nobody out. All right, Smith at second, Yastrzemski at first. The stretch, he squares the bunt, bunt, and Munson picks it up, picks it, everybody's safe. That is coming to cover home. Munson was going to pick that up barehanded and throw to third base. He hit the ball with his bare hand and then kicked it with his foot out to the mound. And now the bases are loaded with nobody out. and charge Munson with an error. And we're going to have a runner now. Tommy Harper will run for Orlando Cepeda. One of the few times all year that Munson has not been able to handle a bunt. He tried to get it with his bare hand. 
knocked it down and kicked it with his foot. All right, Sparky Lyle pitching to Rico Petroselli. Nobody out, bases loaded. The pitch, inside, ball one. And Rico wants the umpire to look at the ball. He does, and Evans throws it out of the game. The 1-0 delivery. Swing and a foul. 1-1. Sparky. Got his work cut out for him. Oh, well, we've seen him get out of jams just as tough. Couldn't be any tougher. Bases loaded. Nobody out. And trying to protect a one nothing lead. Here's the windup. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes. Goes back to the rosin bag. One ball, two strikes, nobody out. Munson gives the sign. All three runners lead away. The windup. The pitch. Strike three. Who oh, is single to left, pops to first, and pops to third. Bucky threw Rico one of his best sliders of the year. Broke down and in. All right, one man out. Base is still loaded. Yankees leading one to nothing in the top of the ninth. Lined up by Lyle. And the pitch. Ground ball to third. Nettles has it. Goes to second one. To first base. Bloomberg made a terrible throw. It bounced about 10 feet in front of the plate through Munson's legs into the stands. Two-run score, and the Red Sox lead 2-1. to one. There are two out, and Fisk went to second on Munson's overthrow. So it's an error charge to Bloomberg. The pitch to Evans. A bouncer. Nice play by Lyle. And throws him out. A tough break. Two runs on two hits. There were two errors in the inning and one man left. And now in the middle of the ninth inning, it's the Red Sox two and the Yankees one. Hey, baseball fan, this is Bill Edwardson. We've got sports for you in the morning on Breakfast with Bill. At 7.20 and 8.20, we'll bring you all the results and some commentary, too, on the sporting scene today. And, of course, most of all, our bill of fare on Breakfast with Bill is music. Got the good old favorites by Frank Sinatra, Ella Fitzgerald, George Shearing, Dave Brubeck, and others. And some of the newer contemporary sounds, people like the Carpenters, and uh, Karen Wyman, Barbara Streisand, and others. And at 7.45 and 8.45 and 9.45, it's time to laugh a little bit. That signals the Grump Club here on the Breakfast with Bill show. We'll hear from people like Alan Funt and his candid microphone. Uh, David Fry doing some of his hilarious political impressions. Fat Jackie Leonard and Tom Lehrer and others. All on Breakfast with Bill on the Grump Club. Here from 7 to 11, Monday through Friday mornings on WQBK AM and FM Rensselaer. San Francisco beat Cincinnati 6-2. Billy's nothing, Cubs nothing after an inning and a half. And Houston and Atlanta for a doubleheader. And we're going to have Big Bob Veal coming on to relieve... Here in the bottom of the ninth inning, the Red Sox leading 2-1. to one. The pitches of record are Sparky Lyle for the Yankees, Mel Stottlemyre not involved, and Ray Culp. And 
both of the Boston runs are unearned because of the error by Munson and the error by Bloomberg. And Beal will be pitching at the top of the order. We're going to have some pinch hitters. Horace Clark is going to bat for Bernie Allen and Felipe Alou for Johnny Callison. Man, I tell you, this ball game was going along. Perilous ball. Stottlemyre pitching a beautiful ball game. Let's see, Bob Veal has an earned run average of 3.15. He's won one and lost one, making his 18th appearance of the year. He has allowed just one home run all year. So it'll be Horace Clark, Felipe Alou, and Roy White to face Bob Veal. The Yankees trail now 2-1. to they were leading all the way on Bobby Mercer's 15th homer of the year in the fourth inning. And a little bit of loose play, two errors. And the top of the ninth cost them two unearned runs. And now they got to battle back, so Horace Clark steps in. Clark batting 270 has nine doubles and 22 runs batted in. So big Bob Beal and he is big. Into the windup. Pitch the clock high and tight ball one. Beal winds again. The pitch. That one's in there. Strike called. One and one. Beal can still throw hard. All right, the windup. The pitch. Ground ball. Beats it to left field. Right under the glove of Petroselli. And Clark starts off the bottom of the ninth with a single, a hard shot in the left field. Felipe Alou. All right, the Yankees trailing two to one here in the bottom of the ninth. Felipe batting 244. Stretch by Veal. Is pitch to Alou Felipe ready to bunt, takes it high, ball one. Felipe has six doubles, three homers, and 17 runs batted in. Felipe looks down at Dick Hauser. Locke has five stolen bases. Pretty tough to get a good jump on Beal. Yastrzemski holding him on. Here's the stretch. Throw to first base, but Horace is back. Veal ready to go. He sets again. His pitch, Felipe squares, bunts the ball. Veal up with it, goes to second base, and they got him. Throw to first, they almost got him there. Felipe did not run hard. That was a great play by Veal. The ball was not bunted that hard. And I guess Clark did not get a good jump. He had to come in and towards the foul line, picked it up without looking through to Aparicio for the force play. And Aparicio's throw back to Yastrzemski almost got Felipe Alou, who was watching the play so intently, he forgot to run and just about got to first base. So the batter is Roy White, who's 0 for 3. Line to right, bounced to second, and struck out. All right, one big out for the Red Sox. Stretch by Veal. Pitch to Roy. Foul back on the screen. He had a good cut at that fastball.
So one out here in the bottom of the ninth. The Red Sox in front two to one. Stretch by Veal. High foul. That'll be out of play. Back into the seat. Yastrzemski chases it, but it goes way back in. Nothing in two on Roy White. Now Veal asked for time. He wants a new baseball. Two strikes on Roy White. Stretch by Veal. And the pitch just a little bit inside. A good curveball. Mighty close. A ball and two strikes. Veal taking plenty of time. One out in the bottom of the ninth. The Lou leads away at first. The pitch is fouled again out of play. Over the Yankee dugout and back into the crowd. Bob Bill. And relief of Ray Culp. And Culp pitched himself a beautiful ball game as did Stottlemyre. All right, Veal comes to the belt. And the pitch. High and tight ball, two, two, and two. Veal takes the handkerchief out, mops his brow, and the glasses. On deck, Bobby Mercer. Veal gets the sign from Fisk. Here's the stretch. The 2-2 pitch. Loop to left field. And Miller coming on. He's there, though, and makes the catch. That Miller gets some jump on the ball. The ball was hit off the fist. And the batter now, Bobby Mercer. Bobby fly deep to right, home it into the Yankee bullpen, and fly deep to center. Aparicio and Fisk go out to talk with Bob Veal. Red Sox are leading 2-1 to one in the bottom of the ninth inning with two outs. And Felipe Alou at first base on deck is Celerino Sanchez, who will bat for Bloomberg should Mercer get on. <laughs> Excitement at Yankee Stadium. Right down to the very last pitch. All right, Mercer is ready. Veal is ready. Alou with a short lead off first. Pitch to Bobby. Low and outside, ball one. And Fisk wanted that pitch. Gap in left center field. If Bobby can hit a line drive out there, Alou will score. Bill looks in, gets the sign. Comes set. And the pitch. Ground ball and throw a base hit. And the Lou is going to go to third base. He'll make it easily. Runners at first and third. As Mercer singles to the right of Guerrero. And Celerino Sanchez will be the batter. He is hesitating in the on-deck circle as Fisk goes out to talk with Veal. Bobby Mercer now two for four on the day. Bobby has hit the ball hard. Here comes Eddie Casco. The Red Sox skipper out to the mound to talk with Veal. Ocellarino Sanchez. The youngster from Mexico. Batting 231. He has two doubles at home of four runs batted in.
And you wonder what's going through Celerino's mind. It'll be going through in Spanish, that's for sure. But the same meaning. So Alou is at third, Mercer at first. And you can see how important the sacrifice punt was to the Red Sox and to the Yankees. This ball game would have been all tied up. But a fine fielding play by Bob Beal. So here's the situation. Two out, bottom of the ninth. Alou at third, Mercer at first. The Red Sox lead two to one. And Sanchez batting for Bloomberg. The stretch by Beal. He comes set. Pitch to Celerino. Swing and a miss. Strike one. And Celerino is really swinging for the fences there. And I tell you, the fences are pretty far for a right-hand batter. And Felipe Alou yelled something down in Spanish to Celerino. He chokes up a bit more on the bat. Beal sets again. Pitch swing and a miss strike two. Two quick strikes on Sanchez. And now Celerino's got to protect that plate. Mercer off first, Alou off third. Beal ready. The kick. The pitch bouncer, Beal has it. Throws to first base and the ball game is over. An exciting ball game, but the Red Sox pull it out in the ninth inning. For the Yankees, no runs, two hits, no errors, two men left. The ball game is over and the Red Sox win it two to one. The total for the Red Sox, two runs, six hits, no errors. For the Yankees, one run, six hits. And two errors, both of them coming in the ninth inning, and both very costly. Culp, the winner, is two and three. Lyle, the loser, two and four. And Veal gets his eighth save of the year.